Welcome to the Savage Nation. Today we're going to talk about free speech, a topic I know an awful lot about uh, from several fronts. One, because I'm in the free speech business. Without the First Amendment, I wouldn't be on the radio, which would please many of you on the left who don't believe in free speech at all. You believe in controlled speech. You believe in government speech. You believe in progressive speech. In other words, you believe in your hate speech and no one else's. And, of course, we're going to focus on the Pamela Geller event in Texas and how O'Reilly and Greta Sustern, owned and operated by a, uh, uh, I think, 18% still owned by Prince Alawite. I'm not sure. But bending over backwards to ban, uh, to blame the victim, in other words, didn't attack the Islamic murderers, didn't attack the religion for putting this hatred in the minds of these throwbacks, but no, attacks the person who provoked them. Of course she provoked them. She did it on purpose. It's to show the world what they're capable of unless they're constrained. And today it's cartoons of Muhammad, but what is it tomorrow? You have to understand that a large number of Muslims don't just want to ban pictures of Muhammad, but they want to ban any speech critical of Islam. And I can guarantee you that Hussein in the White House is already drawing up plans to ban the criticism of Islam. Now let's go back in time here. O'Reilly and Greta, I would say, should be ashamed of themselves, but they have no shame. They've always been fronts for the progressive Islamist establishment. That's my opinion. But they're not alone. There's some people who I like very much who've attacked Pamela Geller, including Laura Ingram, including Donald Trump. They have it totally wrong. She didn't taunt them with her actions, and if she did, so what? So what if she taunted, taunted them with their actions? Let me tell you something. I have to agree with O'Reilly and Greta and all the others. Let me ask you some questions. Was Martin Luther King and other civil rights leaders provoking violence when they marched from Selma to Montgomery? I don't think so. How about that one? How about the uh, American Nazi Party <clears throat> marching in a Jewish neighborhood in Skokie, Illinois, being defended by the ACLU, made up mainly of Jewish lawyers who said, they have every right, They're not, we don't agree with the Nazis, but hey, we'll defend their right to march. Where are all of those good Jewish liberals today defending Pamela Geller? They're not, they're attacking Pamela Geller. Do you understand this? There is no excuse for, for violence simply because someone said something or drew something you find offensive. That's not the American way. Well, what's next? Is it okay for the LGBT crowd to bomb churches because churches provoke them by preaching against homosexuality? Is it okay for some to attack liberal churches because they provoke by supporting a sadomasochism and abortion? Of course not. Pamela Geller is a provocateur, but she did nothing wrong. Pamela and those who participated in that event were peacefully exercising their free speech rights in opposition to the very murderous violence that occurred in France related to the Charlie Hebdo and many others who have suffered and been murdered because they dared criticize or make fun of Islam. I believe that O'Reilly is a coward hiding behind the middle road in order to pretend that he really is the middle road. No, my friends, this is pure evil. Pure evil kills for a cartoon. This is all about free speech. You have to understand what this is all about. It's all about the Muslims in the United States of America and the world trying to shut down any criticism of their Quran and Muhammad. I have read the Quran. It is quoted extensively as part of dialogue in Countdown to Mecca, my novel coming out next week. In over a hundred places, they call for killing the infidel. Why doesn't the New York Times talk about the holy book itself? Why doesn't the New York Times, which attacks the Catholic Church in an, in an obtuse manner on a regular basis, look into the Quran and see the more than 100 verses that call Muslims to war with what they call non-believers? That would be anyone who isn't Muslim. Why doesn't the New York Times look at Quran 551? which says that Muslims are not to take Jews and Christians for friends. Allah describes them as unjust people. The answer is quite clear, because we're living in a twisted world. There's a lot more to talk about, and we'll talk about it here on the Savage Nation. And there's something else you have to know. The FBI said they overlooked the Texas Muslim shooters' violent tweets because there are so many like them. Did you hear this? The official said there are so many like him that you have to prioritize your investigations. Really? 
That's very interesting because the Islamic State just said that they have at least 71 active Islamic State members in the U.S. trained to kill. Why aren't they rounding them up? They may be on the FBI watch list. I mean, mixed in with watching Christians, returning war veterans, anti-abortion activists. Uh, occasionally, they can devote 1% of the FBI's investigative abilities to looking into radicalized Muslims, couldn't they? Why are they bothering with patriotic Americans? Because Hussein is in the White House. In plain English, it's an upside-down world because of what's going on in the White House. More to the point, ISIS calls Jewess Pamela Keller Kanzir, which means pig. Are they the only ones calling Jews pigs? I'm afraid to tell all of you good liberal Jews who are wringing your hands. This is in the essence of the whole this is the, the essence of the whole problem. You have a pathologically willful blindness as to what is going on in the world. You have no idea what U.S. Muslim attitudes are towards Jews and Christians. You like to think that because they appear at interdenominational uh, groups that they're on your side. You want to find out what they're saying about Jews and Christians behind the back, behind your back. My friends, this is the beginning of the battle. And Geller may be repugnant. Geller may be obnoxious. Geller may be a provocateur. But Geller did the world a favor. Geller exposed the hatred that exists within Islam itself. It's not just within the jihadis. I have said to you numerous times, if you look back on the Jewish Bible, the Old Testament, it's filled with hate. It's filled with hate. Kill homosexuals, kill adulterers, this and that. I've read Leviticus. I've read it on the air. But modern Jews, even Orthodox Jews, don't kill homosexuals and they don't stone adulteresses. They know the difference between a 5,000-year-old text and the real world, the world of the modern, uh, the modern world, the world of humanity today. And Christianity. Christianity used to put people to the sword who were blaspheming Jesus. That was in the 15th century. But Christianity went through a reformation. Islam has not gone through a reformation. And instead of attacking Pamela Geller for showing us what is at the core of the religion and what animates some of the morons at the lowest level of the uh, organization, which you may call a religion, some would call it just a political movement disguised as a religion, it's a Trojan horse in which they're using, by the way, to get into this country and to try to tell us how to live. Today it's cartoons, tomorrow it's pork on the menu. After it's pork on the menu, it's other graven images they don't like. After that, they'll take down the crosses off churches because they find them offensive. They've already done that in places in Michigan. They've stopped church bells from ringing. So make no mistake about it. She sees the handwriting on the wall. And as repugnant and as provocative as she may be, it's about free speech. And you know there's a saying that many of you conservatives used to repeat. I think you've heard it. Free speech is not free. This is exactly what we're talking about with regard to Pamela Geller and the Texas murders. Free speech is not free. The graves of our warriors across Europe and America, our, our cemeteries are filled with people who fought <coughs> for the right to criticize others without getting killed for it. So if you want to give that away and fall into O'Reilly and uh, uh, Scarface's trap, go ahead. They had no right to criticize. Oh, they had every right to criticize her, but they got it wrong. So let's begin by playing the stupidity of O'Reilly the Leprechaun in clip number one. By setting up a contest and awarding $10,000 for a depiction of the Prophet Muhammad, the American Freedom Defense Initiative spurred a violent incident. That wasn't smart, even though the group has its supporters. Bill, you know better than that. You know you're just appeasing your Muslim controllers. You know you're just appeasing your Muslim, Muslim owners. You know what you're doing, Bill. You know very well, very, very well, that they didn't spur the violent attack. And you should be attacking the attackers, not the victim, Bill. But go on to clip two, and you'll see why I've called him the leprechaun for 20 years now. And Insulting wait, the entire... Wait, and, why, and why Michael Savage is banned from Fox News. Listen to clip two. Insulting the entire Muslim world is stupid. It does Stop not right advance... The Bill, insulting the First Amendment is what you're doing. That's even more stupid. Nor does that advance the cause of liberty, Bill. 
This is the lowest point in your career. We know about the Lufa incident that was bought up, bought off. We know how you have skewed the truth for years and pretended to be a conservative in order to build your ratings. You're a very smart businessman with a master's degree, and you know very well what you're doing here. Listen to clip two. Insulting the entire Muslim world is stupid. It does not advance the cause of liberty or get us any closer to defeating the savage jihad. You can't have may not have ways. noticed, but some Muslim countries are now fighting ISIS and Al Qaeda themselves. Irrelevant. Jordan and Egypt, two of the most powerful. Irrelevant. You think it's a smart strategy to insult the Muslim countries of Jordan and Egypt by besmirching their religious icon? Do you're you? whistling in the dark. You are full of it, Bill. You've never been a bigger leprechaun. Get the green suit and get the justice cap because you've just lost 50% of your audience. Now, we're going to talk about this because Pamela Geller who is a provocateur and a little nuts, in my opinion, uh, but pro probably the great, bravest wo woman in the United States of America right now, uh, certainly needs to be listened to. She did this in order for you to see the hatred that exists under the surface of the Muslim community, not only here but around the world. The day after that, ISIS says they have agents all over America ready to strike. Why didn't the FBI get up and say to the American people, don't worry about it, You've given us trillions of dollars. We know who they are. We're going to arrest them tomorrow. We're going to preemptively arrest all of the sleeper cells because we've been tracking them for 10 years. And oh, by the way, oh, by the way, did you know that they were tracking the shooter in Texas for almost eight to nine years? Why didn't they stop him when he bought his AK-47? Why didn't they stop him when he bought his bulletproof vest? Why did the FBI permit the jihadi to come to Texas and open fire with his automatic weapon? When you think about that one, I'm sure you'll have another opinion about who the victim is here. The victim is Pamela Geller. And for O'Reilly to do this is embarrassing. I'd expect this from Greta Grand Sustern. She's always been a middle-of-the-road liberal. Ever since her surgery, uh, I've seen it in her show. She pretends to be conservative. She intends to be balanced. She intends, she pretends to be objective. But Greta Van Susteren was always a liberal. And by the way, I think she's a member of the Scientology cult, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe someone ought to do a little show on Greta Van Susteren's association with Scientology instead of worrying about Tom Cruise. I'm more worried about the associations of people in the news media than actors who I never look to for any opinion whatsoever. And that's my opening. I'll be right back.